Okay, let's talk about Twitter. You can probably sense the overall flavor of what this video is gonna be based on my composure right now. And it's not because I hate Twitter. I love Twitter. Twitter's probably my favorite social media platform right now. It's just that it can be really hard to give advice on Twitter. And most advice already given about Twitter is, it's just not helpful. Twitter is such a strange platform. It's, it's like an enigma. You can't really characterize what kind of content is on Twitter because everybody is on Twitter. You've got YouTubers on Twitter, Instagram models are on Twitter, journalists and politicians are on Twitter, billionaire CEOs are all on Twitter. Everybody's content is different. No matter what you make outside of Twitter, you're on Twitter. Which means that if I make a video on how to post on Twitter, there's gonna be exceptions for every rule or guideline that I give. I know this, I'm aware of it. So don't bother posting in the comments, this one rule is wrong because this thing, I know. So really that means the only way I could make a video that no one can argue with me on is if I give like specific don't do's, like, like don't say racist things, you know? And does that really help you get better at the platform than you were before? No, not at all. Plus there are racists on Twitter, so someone could still argue with me there. I love Twitter because it's an intimate platform. You get to see inside the mind of these billionaire CEOs. You get to see their fleeting thoughts that they think and wanna share with the world before any self-control can tell them, hey, you know, maybe, maybe don't say this to the world. Things like, you, know, you get to see someone like Elon Musk write, I love ramen. It's, it's fascinating. So let's get this camera set up in the normal spot and let's have a conversation about what it means to be more effective on Twitter. Okay. Twitter. I feel like it's not centered. That's better. Okay, I've got nine things I want to talk to you about and none of these things are like Okay, what to put in your bio, what to make your profile picture. That stuff is arbitrary. There's a bazillion videos out there. This is not straight either. There's a million videos on that kind of stuff out there. I wanna to talk to you about your content, what kind of stuff you are tweeting. And by the way, guys, if you enjoy videos like this, make sure you like the video and also hit the subscribe button for, for you and for me, for both of us, for us, hit the subscribe button. And the number one most important thing that you can do to tweet better is to understand the platform and, and how content is viewed on Twitter. And don't, don't shut off the video because that was vague. I know I'm about to explain it. Look, let's take Twitter and let's compare it with another platform whose content is a little more tangible. Let's take YouTube. YouTube is a searching and browsing platform. You find nearly 100% of your content by either searching for it or by browsing the recommended feeds of said searched video or of your own homepage or subscription feed or either way, nearly all the content digested on YouTube is either searched or browsed, right? And that changes the way that you create YouTube content. It means that the two most important things that you can do are SEO, which is search engine optimization, getting your videos to show up at the top of a search result feed, or B, making your title and thumbnail the catchiest so when people are scrolling past 100 videos, they stop at yours. Those are the two top priorities. But on Twitter, it's very different. Yes, there's a browsable function to it because you're scrolling through your timeline. It's a little different. But for the most part, what you see are the things that people share and interact with. You see retweets, you see replies, you see conversation threads that have happened over the course of minutes or hours. That changes the way you post to this platform. And I know this first one's kind of vague. We're gonna digest this down and, and pick it apart piece by piece with all the later, uh, the other eight things that we're gonna talk about. But for the most part, it's important that you recognize things like this is not a searchable platform. Which brings us to point number two, which is usually a big mistake. Hashtags. I want you to think about the last time you actually used a hashtag and found a tweet that you interacted with because of that. It happens, and I know there are the outliers out there that are like, I use hashtags all the time. You are the exception, not the rule. While not useless, hashtags often cause more harm than good. Okay, let's see if I can help you look at this objectively. Look at some of your favorite users on Twitter. 
how many hashtags do they actually use? Probably either few or zero. Social media analysts have actually come out and said that using more than two hashtags lessens your engagements on your tweet. And I think it's there's a reason for it, at least speaking for myself, if I were to talk subjectively, I don't like tweets that have multiple hashtags. I think they're obnoxious and it makes you look like you are so desperate to be found that you don't care about the content. I'm not saying never use hashtags. There are occasional times when it comes in handy. I think this might be too close. All I'm saying is don't sacrifice your content and your potential engagement on your content just to make it more searchable on a platform that's just not a searchable platform. Gotta weigh the pros and the cons. Okay, follower count. This is one of the areas that makes Twitter an anomaly amongst all the other social medias. Your follower count is generally not as great of an indicator of how good you are at Twitter as it is on other platforms. On other platforms, the better you do, the more followers you get. On Twitter, Twitter for the most part, and again, there are exceptions to this rule, but Twitter for the most part is a destination platform. Most people on Twitter aren't professional tweeters, right? Usually Twitter is a secondary place to go when you like someone else's content, whether it's their publication, whether it's their videos, whether it's their stream. When people like the content that you place on the other mediums on, on your YouTube channel or your Twitch channel, when they like you as a person, they follow you on Twitter because they want to hear the things that you have to say between your content and they want to grow a personal relationship with you. What that means is don't tweet for the sole purpose of growing Twitter followers. That's just, it's not how it works. What you should be focusing on is retweets, on replies, on likes. Are you sharing things that get your already present audience engaged with what you say? If you have 500 followers, but you're getting one like per post, that shows you that your audience doesn't really care that much about what you have to say. But if you can share content on Twitter that gets people engaged, that gets people to respond, that gets people to ask you questions, that's what's gonna get them intrigued for future videos, which is basically, let's well, let's just move on to number four because I'm already like halfway into this thing. You need to be engaging with your audience and not just engaging with them, you need to be doing it genuinely. Right? Twitter, as I mentioned before, is a very intimate platform. It's not standing on a stage anymore. On Twitter, you are speaking to people personally, okay? Ask people questions that you feel like you'd want to answer if you saw the tweet. Talk with them like a real person. Be vulnerable. Some of my most interacted with tweets are ones where I was talking about a frustration and not a complaint, but just something that I've been thinking about and I, I couldn't get out of my head for the last hour and, and I wanted to open up a, a conversation, a dialogue with the people that followed me and cared about me. Just remember on Twitter, you're there to connect with people that already like you and follow you. You're not there to advertise yourself. Okay, number five. This one's a little more of an analytical thing. Use media in your tweets. Add a picture, add a GIF, add things that move and add color to their timeline. People are scrolling past 100 tweets a minute. You need something that's gonna make them stop. So putting something sparkly on their timeline is gonna make them pause and read what's attached to it. People like shiny things. And again, there are exceptions to every rule. Sometimes a GIF can seem forced depending on the context of the tweet. Recognize when a good one or two line message is better than uh hey here's a funny gif to go with what i'm thinking right now it's go back to number four and be genuine you get the point number six and i feel like people are just figuring this out more and more often on here you can create original content for twitch stupid little videos people post on twitch can go viral in fact it's so uncommon right now that it is such a good time to make content on twitch think about how many stupid videos you've seen someone make and you watched it over and over again you shared it because you wanted your friends to see it it's a great way to grow on twitter plus i'm not sure if you knew this since vine shut down as long as you make the video less than six and a half seconds long, then maybe they've changed that number by now, but I know when Vine originally shut down, if you kept the length of a video under six and a half seconds, it automatically replays over and over, just like Vine. So take that, do what you will with it. Just don't discount the value of making original content on Twitter. Okay, number seven, and this is a hard one for everybody. Try not to complain too much. I know we've all been wronged by a big company and in the moment when you're frustrated, you don't know what to do, you don't know how to get them back, you think I'm gonna tweet at them and that'll show them. Don't do that. It doesn't give you the satisfaction that you think it's gonna give you. And trust me, when you're verified on Twitter, the temptation is even larger because you think they'll notice, they'll see my tweet. Someone's at the door. Just more stuff, someone just don't mind the mess. 
We're reorganizing. I've been meaning to do a studio tour of, uh, of the whole place. I know you guys have been asking for it. And I've been setting up the second room over there as like a film room, so maybe some videos on the channel. I gotta do more cardio. Anyway, complaining on Twitter. I know it feels like justice when you publicly shame a big company who wronged you, but to the user reading your tweet who wasn't on the phone with an idiot from, you know, insert company here, you just kind of sound petty. And it's not gonna get you what you want. The company's just to respond with, oh, we're sorry to hear you had a bad time. Please DM us if there's anything we can do to help. It's just, there's no winning. Don't do it. Okay, number eight is kind of a big one, and I referenced it a little bit in the intro to this video. Twitter's not a billboard. Okay, imagine that you're hanging out in a circle of friends and another friend walked up in the middle of your sentence and said, hey guys, I'm having another conversation over there in five minutes. Be there or be square, like you see a lot of people say on Twitter. Are you gonna go and be a part of that conversation? Probably not. Right, that's just obnoxious. Every once in a while you should announce that you're going live on Twitch or that you've posted a new video, but when it becomes this place where your tweets feel like an advertisement for your content rather than a supplemental conversation to go along with your content, people are gonna stop reading, people are gonna unfollow, people aren't gonna care. It's important that you recognize, again, and I know I've said it like five times, Twitter is a place for conversation. Twitter's a place for engagement. Twitter's a place where your followers, who already follow you and love your content, can engage with you and build a personal relationship with you. And that's what you should be doing on Twitter. Not advertising your content every day. You get the point. Okay, last one, number nine. Stop trying to get verified. Twitter verification is different than any other verification. It is not about how good you're doing on the platform. It's not like every other platform or on YouTube. If you get over 100,000 subscribers, you can apply for verification. On Twitch, if you have over 75 average viewers for a month, etc., you can get verified. On Twitter, you get verified because your name means something. Okay? If you're a musician, you get verified because you released an original album of some kind. If you are a publisher, a journalist, you get verified to make sure nobody can publish articles in your name and pretend to be you. If you're a politician, same thing. So no one can impersonate you and say terrible things. People get verified for a reason on Twitter. My wife and I got verified because we were some of the top music artists on Vine, which was owned by Twitter. And they were using us in some of their promotional content therefore wanting to verify us on Vine, and the way they verify you on Vine is they verify you on Twitter, and then you sign in with your Twitter on a Vine, and it verifies you on Vine. Anyway, there's a reason I'm verified. There's a reason other people are verified. You can't just push for that unless there's a reason for it. Just important thing for you to know about the platform. Just guys, look, the best advice I can give you for Twitter is just to tweet, <laughs> to treat, <laughs> to tweet, to tweet, twi to, 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 to treat, to treat Twitter, treat Twitter like a conversation you'd have in real life. If you can imagine yourself saying something to a friend and making them laugh and beginning a whole conversation, that's the kind of stuff you should be tweeting. And everybody's different and everybody's conversations are different and that's what makes Twitter so amazing is there's no one type of content that works. It's just conversations. If you felt like this was helpful at all, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Also, feel free to follow me on Twitter. Links to all those things down in the description below. Also, I stream on Twitch every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. If you don't already follow me, my link is in the description below. I stream at twitch.tv slash Harris Heller. Feel free to come hang out. But just for conversation's sake for you, go ahead and leave a comment down in the description below of who your favorite person on Twitter is. You don't have to say me. You can, but you don't have to say me. Mine is probably Elon Musk. Such a fascinating, weird dude. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful and to switch things up a little bit this week. Happy tweeting. We're running on to this like, like some sort of James Bond movie. Oh, f <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if I don't make the same mistake. Oh, come on, come on. <laughs> <laughs> what just happened? <laughs>